you are a uh, a speaker on resiliency. You're a spunky a solo. Uh, you're a spunky senior. You are a senior solopreneur. So, Patricia Morgan, do you mind if I ask how old you are? I'll be seventy four this December. Oh my gosh! Would you mind saying a couple more words as to you know who you are? <laughs> Well, I'm uh, often described as um, a mentor to speakers, an author. I've written a few books. Um, uh, yes, a speaker workshop leader, and uh, I have some keynotes underneath my belt. I'm a certified Canadian counselor who does clinical psychotherapy, and I'm doing. I just recently learned how to do that online through Zoom. Uh, so that's been an interesting learning curve. Um, of course, um, mother to three, grandmother to five, actually great grandmother to two, and happily married most days. <laughs> That's enough. <laughs> so, you know, we worry about our parents. Is there anything you can say um, to help us ease that worry? What kind of things can we do? Right. So, uh, obviously, seniors are often feeling alone when they are in those senior residence or living on their own previously, perhaps in their own home. Isolation is a significant issue with seniors already. So then we layer that with the coronavirus requirement that we not have physical contact. So it is a huge dilemma. The other reason that uh, seniors often wither up when they become alone is that uh, uh, human touch is very, very important. Uh, it's the largest organ in the body. So we need, we need to be touched and to be touched. So how do we do that when we can't even make physical, physical touch? So all of your concerns are legitimate. And you do no one any service by taking up a lot of energy and worry. So I recommend a few, a few items. So here are some ideas that may help. So number one, when you find yourself worrying, decide to do one act. Do the act and say, I've done it. And, and see if that helps the worry calm down. It might be to write an old fashioned letter. It might be to a uh, phone mom and say to her, I have decided, don't ask, don't ask um, people. I'm finding too many people saying, well, how can I be helpful? I'm finding that people are reluctant to ask for help, to add to the burden. So reach out and say, and you decide what works for you. Every week on Friday night, I'm going to call you, or it could be every day if you have more time, and that helps calm your worry. Passing on your worry to your mom is not going to be helpful. Uh, humor is a very good little tool. So if you can collect some humor, and I know that you often notice them on social media, collect some of those humor pieces, print them off, and send them to her. Uh, third item is uh, do you use the phone uh, well? And does your mom use technology? Uh, so she's got a new iPhone and uh, she also has the earned features of dementia. So she forgets that she's getting quite uh, stressed that, you know, sometimes she can't figure out what's going on. So I just remind her, no, I am actually using FaceTime. It's me who's calling you. Um, and so it's just a gentle reminder. Right. So yeah, 80% 80, 80, 80 of our cues with one another are physical cues. So we can be saying, I love you. I love you. Uh, and so if you can have the, the um, visual, you're, you're making much better connections. So, but we, but we have to acknowledge that a lot of seniors won't even open up an iPhone or an iPad or a computer. What do we do about them? Uh, use a phone and use lots of verbal expression and share the best thing that happened to you today and ask them what's the best, what is the best event that happened today? What was the best food you ate today? What was the best outfit you saw on your, uh, your, uh, you, my mother used to call them the inmates to her senior residence. She'd say, we have the inmates. We're just, we're just in the holding tank till we get to heaven, you know. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen her. Well, this <laughs> What's the most interesting outfit you saw at the, at the you know, the breakfast table or the gathering today? Yes. What's the most interesting television show did you watch? So this is this is a really key key little question. Is yeah. when your senior mother said something, and I don't care whether she's rumbling or whether she's celebrating or whether she's worrying. Uh, or whether she was being tired, you just say, "Tell me more." Okay. I have, in all, yeah, in all my 73 years, I have not met one person who doesn't long for being seen, being heard, being acknowledged. And you can put, you know, you don't know what to talk about. Share the best best for your day. Ask about her. That doesn't go anywhere. Then uh, anything she says doesn't matter what. It's a really cool tool. Tell me more. Before I start to understand more about dementia, you know, even my maternal grandmother had it and it was really bad in the end. And, you know, so I'm just getting a, sorry. Um, it can be quite, um, you know, they can be difficult. But again, we have, I'm understanding now that this is not her or yes, this is her. So how can we, what can we do about that non cooperation? Uh, well, again, go back, uncooperation. So you want her to do something she doesn't want to do. Yes. So you have, first of all, you have to evaluate your risk. Mm -hmm. uh, let go of what's not a high risk. Oh, I love that. Uh, second of all, go back to listening. Tell me more, tell me more. Uh, and uh, often I find that if you do tell me more, tell me more, you find out the core of what's going on at the, at the bottom. Again, oh, I'm I'm maybe, maybe, really, maybe not uh, arguing about what you think you're arguing about. Yes, yes. Uh, did you want to read uh, um, what we're yeah. about here? I think it's worth reading. Uh, thank you. So, outstanding points, Elnor and Patricia. I find that there are some amazing champions inside various care centers. These champions could be the rec therapist, a nurse's assistant, etc. I mention this as these people, in my case, have been helpful to bring an iPad for FaceTime to my mom. And yet, Maureen's mom is also there. So thank you, Maureen, for normalizing this. So when we can arrange it, she may only speak for a minute or two, depending mm -hmm. on where she is at on that day. Wow, wow. Your visual cues, humor, are the best thing that happened in your day is valuable ideas. Thank you so much, Maureen, for that. Before we go to the next question, I just like to um, expand on uh, what Maureen was talking about. Yes, please. yes. My mother had some uh, wonderful attendants who uh, enriched her life and really clued into who she was and what would uh, please her. And one would take her for walks to to see gardens. So yeah, making friends with those caregivers can make a whole difference to you because you can go to bed at night knowing that somebody cares about your your mom or your dad yes. and and it, it uplifts their life mm -hmm. so those people with great dignity and i would i used to take the gifts to the people that were looking after my mom just not my mom so i would want to back, backtrack a little bit if yeah. you schedule a regular meeting that gives um mom yes something to look forward to and looking forward to the future mm -hmm. uh, very very helpful and that reminds me to talk about when this is all over what you're going to do maybe a family meeting uh, something to look forward to that you can imagine rather than imagining the worst and then the, also the other piece i want to say about bringing in an ipad or some of the visuals is mm -hmm. i've been doing this to clients that i've been spending time with on zoom mm -hmm. how they need to have the physical touch which i referred to before so yeah. if, you're, if you're having a facetime with your mom mm -hmm. you can get her to cross her arms like this love that cross her arms like this mm -hmm. at the end of the conversation 
and have her say, can you feel, squeeze yourself? So you can feel me squeezing you. And ooh, ooh, like that, they'll actually get some of their touching needs met. It's very calming, it's very soothing. And this is called the butterfly hug. If you can get a senior to do this, it's very calming. It's good for the nervous system. And I just- uh, I'm gonna write that down so I don't forget that. Butterfly hug. Um, so crossing arms across. Cross, yep. You can do it on the shoulders yeah. or you can do it here on the biceps. Yeah. And it's like blocking a baby, but the baby is me. Yeah, yeah. These are amazing tips. And, you know, one of the things is that I think that, correct me if I'm wrong, but even doing this for yourself, and I'm just feeling the warm energy that's seeping in, just because I need that, and I miss hugs, so I really appreciate you for this uh, comment. Um, I'm just going to finish that. Okay. So, uh, the other thing is that, so thank you so much for sharing that. Now, what I also want to uh, ask you is that um, part of my... <laughs> some psychotherapy right right here right now Alanur. but that old phrase be your own best friend uh, is is a good idea uh, in the old days they called what you're asking for uh, inner child work uh, wounding the uh, helping heal the wounded child within so i i recommend to anybody at any age be, become friends with that child you know, your grandmother and your mother, your dad, uh, the, the inner circle of your family, they gave you what they could. They gave you what they could. And uh, there are pieces, obviously, that you're longing for. And you need to find it in your circle. Of, and you've created quite a healthy circle of people. And you go to that circle to get what you need and you allow yourself to breathe it in. Again, hold that little boy, Al Noor, and tell him that all is well right now. So, without much further, thank you. Lots of love and uh, stay safe, clean hands, open, uh, open hearts and clear minds. And yes, we will get through this together. And uh, yeah, lots of hugs. And we mm -hmm. Patricia and Lee, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. there. Kisses, kisses. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you.